this? Check it out. We're gonna tell a little quick little story. A little tattooing, tattooing uh, prison story, man, way back, back when I was, uh, I think I was 19. That was about 19. Uh, that was 99. 1920, somewhere around there, 99, 2000, I was in a DVI, Tracy, and right there was, it was pretty, that's where I actually learned how to tattoo and all that stuff, I'll drop a video on all that later, um, tattooing was pretty common right there, there was some, some badass artists right there, man, um, a couple of white dudes, there was some white dude, uh, tattoo Larry from San Diego, that dude was dope, man, he used to get down, he used to do like a lot of, uh, uh, Chicano style art even though he was a he was a wood but he used to do a lot of Chicano style art this shit was pretty dope man this shit was pretty badass um there was another dude uh Jeff I believe he was from like Modesto or something he used to get down a lot he used to do he used to do uh, some good work he fucked me up he did some stuff right here he fucked me up uh, that was almost an issue man but he was good people we ended up fixing it um let's see uh who else who else is a good artist there was a, uh, a homie uh, from 18th Street. That dude was, he was badass, man. He was in uh, in Sea Wing. He used to get down really, really good. Um, I started tattooing right there. I learned how to tattoo right there. And then there was a, a homie from Puente that was pretty good, pretty dope. He did a few, uh, a few little tattoos on me. Uh, Tyrant, some good Tyrant. He's, he was pretty dope. He was a homie doing some dope ass work. And there was a uh, shit. There was a lot of people tattooing right there. Who else was tattooing right there? Um, a homie from from Longo. He he was pretty good. Man, there was just so many people tattooing right there. There was a uh, the homie from Squires Drive. He's the one that actually introduced me to tattooing. Man, there was a lot of a lot of um, a lot of dope artists right there. And. Um, ink was so easy to get you didn't have to make ink it was really really easy to come by and it was like dark ass black ink it was good ink it was uh from the hobby shop it was really dope and but one day we're uh, we're tattooing man and, and uh we're we're uh me and a dude from puente and then there was um our point man was some dude from Norwalk, from uh, Norwalk One Ways, and we're tattooing. We're like we're in, in Z Dorm and Tracy, and right there there used to be a lot of. It was kind of easy to tattoo right there. Well, there was this rookie that was there. He used to walk around a lot, man, and uh, it was funny as hell because I was on the on the we're on the triple bunks, leaning on on triple bunks, and. Uh, were tattooing uh, the homie from Puente was tattooing on me and uh, he was doing he was doing this right here you can't really see it it's a, a dollar sign and basically it was it was because uh, I used to be into robbing people a lot you know and that was like a, like a joke you know like when I like if I go rob somebody like boom I just show them the dollar sign and the burner and, and tell them like man the money, the money signs there, like, give me all the money type deal, I was gonna put it in different languages, um, break yourself, or, or give me your money, I was gonna write it on different languages, but I never, we never finished it, we never did it, and it was actually, like, a, a big ass, um, black circle when, when we started, like, you just had the, the dollar sign, and all of it fell out, the ink really doesn't stay too good right there in the hand, and, uh, I got this way before, way before that dude jesse james man he didn't get the he didn't get the, his uh pay me or whatever pay me sucker whatever he had on his hand he got that way way later man uh if you don't believe me look it up man i got this way before him you know and i got the idea from somebody that had it before me one of my own boys that i had grew up with he had the, the same thing but his was smaller and no more beat up uh, that's where the idea originally came from but uh we're right there tattooing man and and um uh, we're on the bunk, I'm leaned over on one side, homeboy's on the other side, and uh, we're right there tattooing, and um, the homie from Norwalk, I don't know what, he decided to go make a cup of coffee or a soup, I don't know what, he just disappeared and he didn't tell us, and uh, one of the rookie COs was passing by, and uh, 
wouldn't really like trip we didn't hear the, the keys as he was walking by the bunk area and, and uh he passed by and when he passed by he looked straight at us like dead dead nuts at us dead nuts at us and uh he like looked and then he like he looked away like it could have been like a quick glance or whatever but i told the homie that had his back to him that was tattooed on him i said hey man he's he's seen us he's seen us and so homeboy grabbed the the machine and uh he threw it he threw it towards me and the the seal turned back around like real fast like hey what are you guys doing like oh we're not doing nothing like oh you guys are tattooing i seen you tattooing we're like we're not tattooing and uh, by that time I had dropped the machine on the floor and uh, I, as he was talking to, to the homie from Puente, they were like kind of arguing and we're telling him like, man, we weren't doing nothing, we weren't doing nothing. I ended up uh, kicking the machine. So it went underneath the bunk and behind the, the CO. And it was funny as fuck, man, because there was uh, some white dude from San Fernando Valley right there. He ended up snatching the machine up and he ended up um, walking away with it and he he uh, the CEO was making a big fuss about it so he started like searching the, the bunk area you know he's like man I seen you guys tattooing I seen you tattooing and we're like man what are you talking about like you're tripping man and I and um, he's like come around the bunk I want to check I want to do a body check so I was like yeah whatever you know okay and I was thinking like fuck what am I going to do so as I was going around the bunk I grabbed a cup and I, I had no shirt on uh, I grabbed a cup of uh, coffee that was right there that we were drinking we were drinking a Cadillac right there and I grabbed a cup and I ended up covering it I ended up covering the tattoo um, with the cup so I went in front of him I was like look man we ain't tattooing him did a whole full body spin this and that and he's like man I, I know I seen you guys tattooing I know I heard the machine like no nah, you didn't hear nothing man you're tripping so he ended up uh we sat down right there on the on the floor while he was doing the whole search. He called his buddy, and then they started searching the whole bunk area, and, and um, they didn't find nothing. They didn't find a damn thing, man, and uh, they didn't find no ink. We were able to be slick enough to get rid of the ink. I think homeboy like put it in his pocket or something. I don't know what the fuck he did, but they weren't able to find nothing. Like they didn't find a damn thing, and, and it was funny because he, he caught us. But we were just a tad bit slicker, man. Um, that motherfucking when I kicked when homeboy threw the machine to me, I kicked it underneath the bunk and it went right behind him. And the other dude grabbed it. It was smooth as day, man. And uh, that dude used to stay like he used to stay trying to catch us after that, you know. It was pretty pretty funny. But that was just a quick little story I wanted to uh, share about one of the times uh, getting caught. Uh, tattooing but not really getting caught um, I just wanted to share that with you guys I was thinking about it um, I'll drop some more videos on, on tattooing and uh, getting caught and different experiences and all kinds of other stuff um, a little later I just want to put this video together and, and put it out and then uh, share an experience with you guys that, that took place with that being said man have a blessed day always stay humble and remain positive I'm out.